Welcome everyone to West Explains Best. Today we are gonna be taking on a CUDA worksheet tutorial called Right Triangle Trig, Finding Missing Sides and Angles. This is a really good exercise, one that I really like because it talks about every type of possi possible uh, question you're gonna get using trigonometry. A quick sum up of trigonometry, it's a, essentially a mathematics where you compare sides uh, in angles of right triangles. So they need to be right triangles for us to make these comparisons. But we have three trig identities, trigonometric identities, sine, cosine, and tangent, and they're all defined right here. This should be review if you're watching this video at this point. So if you need help with this, go check out some of my other videos where I talk about trigonometric ratios, identities, and I also talk about solving for sides and solving for angles. This is a combination of all, so this is a good like summation uh, exercise. Now, the basic principles for solving are going to be the same, whether we're trying to solve for an angle or a side. Okay, so here's our steps to solve. Our steps to solve are number one, determine the reference angle. So if we're looking at this guy, we need to find which angle the problem is referring to. Step two, label the sides. Opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse are the side options. Number three, determine the trig function. If we have only the opposite and adjacent given, then we're going to be using the tangent because that's a trig identity that only uses those two sides. Uh, four, we're going to be plugging in those numbers, whatever they give us. And then five, we're solving. If it's a missing angle, we're going to use inverse trig. And if it's a mix, missing side, we're just going to use regular trigonometry. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Well, this one, uh, let's see, find the measure of each angle indicated. So angles indicate that we will be using da -da -da -da, inverse trig. So we're going to be using inverse trig on these ones. Okay. But let's go ahead and follow our, our step process. So here's our reference angle. Let's label the sides next. That's step one. Step two. Now, notice how I don't have an opposite side. So I don't really need to label the opposite side. I just need to label the adjacent side, which is given in the hypotenuse, is opposite this 90 degrees. Why I'm so far uh, zoomed out, I don't know. There, let me zoom in. So we have our adjacent and hypotenuse. Next, we need to figure out which trig identity uses adjacent and hypotenuse. If you're unfamiliar with Sokotoa, that's usually a, uh, a useful way to remember Sokotoa is just a way to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. So clearly we're going to be using cosine ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to be using the cosine of theta, and we're going to be looking for theta. We don't know what it's equal to. That's our job right now. Equals, and then we put 12 over 13. Okay adjacent over hypotenuse so what do we do from here well we have the cosine of theta we're trying to get theta by itself our goal is to have theta equals something well right now it's being cosined so we have to do the opposite of cosine which is the inverse cosine so we're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides of the equal sign to get it by itself so we're going to take let me copy this copy paste Okay, copy, paste. So we're gonna take the inverse cosine of both of these options. This is where we need a calculator. Definitely need a calculator for this. Now, when we take the inverse cosine of cosine, essentially cancels out, okay? It's the opposite, so it goes away, and we're just left with theta. So theta equals, and now I go to my calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode. I think it's asking for degrees, right? Find the measure of each angle indicated. It doesn't, I doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure it's wanting degrees. So we're just going to assume for this exercise, we're going to do degrees. So I'm going to go inverse cosine. You usually have to hit this on your calculator. You have to hit the second key. Let me show you real fast. So on your calculator, that's what a calculator looks like. You're going to hit the second key. And then you hit the cosine button, which is just going to say this. And usually that will give you uh, inverse cosine. And then you do 12 divided by 13. So you just type in... 12 divided by 13 on your calculator. That's not a button. Uh, and you're going to get 22 point, what's it, round to the nearest tenth. So I get 22.6 degrees. Okay, and that's our answer. We found our missing angle, which is 22.6 degrees. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and try a different one. Um, let's go ahead and do number four. This would be a good one to do. Okay, so number four, reference angle right here. 
uh, label the side. So we have opposite side. This is the side opposite, but it's not the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is over here. We don't really need to know about the hypotenuse because there's no information given, nor are we looking for information on it. And this is our adjacent side. Which trig identity uses opposite over adjacent? That is tangent. So the tangent of theta is going to be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Let me erase that because we know those values. That is 10. Nope, false. That is 11.9 divided by 10. How do we get this, the theta by itself? Well, we're going to do tangent of uh, inverse tangent of both sides, which amounts to 11.9 divided by 10. And that's going to be equal to theta. So I'm just going to take tangent of negative 1. And I'll do 11.9 divided by 10. And I get it's 49. Oh, it's going to round up. It's going to round up to 50.0 degrees equals theta. Okay, so that's going to be our answer. Now, can you do 11.9 divided by 10 first and then take the inverse? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you could put it, you could simplify this first, but I mean, you're doing the same thing. So I just usually wait until I'm done at the end. Uh, let's look for one more. Um, actually, we're good. So that's inverse. Now, find the measure of each side. If it's looking for a side, we know we're going to be using a regular trig. This one's, uh, I find that students like this one a little bit less. But I usually introduce it first because I think it's easier to understand at first. It's just eventually inverse trig becomes a little bit easier to execute. The process is almost identical. We take our reference angle. There's our reference angle. Now we're going to label the sides. Opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay. I'm going to erase opposite because there's no information on it, nor do we care about that information. So we only care about the 11 and the x, the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse are used in only one function, that's cosine. So the cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. We know the angle this time. It's cosine of 37 degrees. And that is equal to 11 over x. What I like to do here is I always, 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 always like to put both sides over 1. So I have a fraction on the left and I have a fraction on the right. Why do I like that? Because now I can cross multiply. It makes it easy when you have an X in the denominator. A lot of my students struggle when there's an X in the denominator. So I just tell them, hey, put it over one, cross multiply. So I have X times cosine of 37 equals 11. What do I do after this? Well, I divide by cosine 37, cosine 37. I'm going to cross these out. Boom. I get X equals 11 divided by cosine. And this is where I'm going to use my calculator need a calculator the uh mathematicians created charts your calc a long time ago your calculator has all those charts already programmed in so we're going to do cosine of 37 and i get 13 point we're rounding to the nearest tenth yeah yep 13.8 so this side is 13.8 you can always check your answer when you're done the hypotenuse should be bigger than the other two sides 13.8 is bigger if it was smaller, we'd have a problem, but it's not. So 13.8 is going to be our answer here. Let's do another one. So we have, uh, let's see, this one, we already did cosine. Uh, let's go ahead and do, well, we don't have, I'm looking for one we haven't done yet. It's particularly sine. I haven't seen, ah, here's one. So I kind of gave it away what we're doing, but here's a reference angle. We have our opposite side. We have our hypotenuse. So we're going to be using sine of 57 is equal to our opposite side 10.8 over x. I like to put it over one. Then I like to cross multiply to solve for x, to get x by itself. So we get 10.8 equals x times sine 57. I'm gonna divide both sides by sine 57. That, and let me set that on the right side. So I have 10.8 divided by sine 57 and I get 12.9. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to punch that in. So we get 12.9. Is 12.9 bigger than the opposite side? Yes, it is. So we know our hypotenuse is the biggest. We're good. Our bases are covered there. 12.9 is our hypotenuse. Good to go. Okay, solve each triangle. Now, these are good ones because they make you uh, solve for all the missing sides. Now, it's actually not that hard, as hard as you think. Because what we can do here, we have a couple different options. We know that these two plus this one need to add up to 180. 
So we can say 90 plus 62 plus our missing angle A needs to equal 180 and then we solve. So we do 90 or 180 minus 90 minus 62. Okay, so I subtracted, what is that? 152 for both sides essentially. And I get A equals 28. So I know this is 28 degrees. You have to solve for all the, solving for a triangle means solving all the angles um, and all the sides. So technically you don't have to use inverse trig for any of these to find um, the missing angle, which is, I mean, that's not a big deal. That's fine. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, but then we need to use uh, trigonometry in order to solve for the missing sides. Now you can pick, so when you have options here, you can pick either 62 or 28. I don't know why, but 62 is calling my name. So I'm gonna label everything in regard to this being my reference. So I'm gonna say, this is my opposite, this is my adjacent, and this is my hypotenuse. Now, could I have chosen 28? Yes. The only difference is, if I would have cho chosen 28 as my reference angle, this becomes adjacent, this becomes opposite, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind as you choose different reference angles the sides change also. So let's go ahead and set up a trig function. Let's go ahead and say, let's try to look for a hypotenuse first. So I'm gonna call hypotenuse X. I'm gonna say sine 62 equals my 22.6 over X. Put it over one, I'm gonna solve. So eventually I'm gonna get 22.6 equals sine 62 times X. I'm gonna divide by sine 62. So I get 22.6, 22.6 divided by sine 62. And I get 25.6. So this is 25.6. Now, once you have two sides, 25.6, oh, I forgot the units, miles. So once you have two sides, you can actually use Pythagorean theorem for the third side, or it can just keep using more trig. So I'm gonna use cosine this time, okay? And I'm gonna keep 62 is my reference angle. So I'm gonna say cosine of 62 is equal to my adjacent side. I'll call that A over my hypotenuse. Now I know it's 25.6. Now, the more you round, the more off your answer is gonna be. So if you already have it stored in your calculator, I would just keep it stored and use it. So 25.59608315. So I'm gonna use that whole thing. The more you round, the, the less likely you're gonna get a true answer. That's just something to keep in mind. It's a good strategy, so over one. As I multiply this, and usually most calculators these days, it's really easy to store or go back and select the answer that you want. So I'm just gonna take my big number, 25.59608315. I wrote it here as 25.6. I'm gonna multiply it right from my calculator times cosine of 62. So when I get that, I get A equals 12.0, rounded to the nearest tenth. And I think the units are miles. So this is 12.0 miles, 12.0 miles. Now, if I were to round, I'm gonna get something a little bit different. So 25.6 times cosine of 62. Oh, barely. So the first one was actually, I mean, it's you have to go to the thousands place before it's different. So it's still pretty accurate, but just keep that in mind about rounding. Okay, now let's say we didn't want to figure out that we could do 180 minus 53 minus 90 to find this missing angle for number 20. We could use inverse trig here. Um, actually, no, not yet. You have to use, you have to have two sides given to use inverse trig. So I don't think any of these have two sides. So we're gonna have to use subtraction. We have to subtract the, the different sides. So um, we could do 90 minus, essentially 90 minus 53, 90 plus 53 minus 180, you get 37. I don't know, I should just do 90 minus 53. Okay, 37, so I have that as my missing angle. I'm gonna make uh, 53 my reference angle, so the hypotenuse is given. I'm gonna start with this x, and I'll call that y. So sine of 53, not 56, sorry. 53, is it gonna be equal to x, my opposite side? This is my adjacent side, this is my hypotenuse, over five. So I do uh, cross multiply, I'm gonna get five times sine of 70, uh, 53, I get it eventually. Okay, so I'll get 
x equals five times sine 53, and I get x equals four. So this is gonna be equal to four, y, no, x equals four. And then I can do the same thing, I, except I can use my cosine. Cosine of 53 is equal to y over five. So cosine over one, cross multiply, y equals five times cosine 53. So five times cosine of 53, and I get y equals three. So this is actually a three, four, five triangle. Makes it easy, there's our answers. And that's how you solve for triangles. Hope you found this exercise helpful. Hope you liked this video. Join me next time on West Explains Best. Hope to see you there.